But anyway, oh, sorry, I'm practicing. Before I start practicing speaking a bit, it's been a hello, Bunger here. It has been a while since I did a video of me. Uh, I did a vlog back in the day, and you shouldn't expect me to become more regular. Maybe I don't know. If I get practice, if I practice speaking better on my own, you might get more videos like this. But for now, this is going to again for a while, and hopefully I'll have more edited videos. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for good fun. I've done a few. I'm sorry with the way I'm thinking if you can't hear certain words well, especially if they have an F count. We're here for good fun. I've done good videos on it. I've talked about it a lot. And I have a play of other people who like doing that. Most notably, Goofbum Completionist. His channel will be linked in the description below. Um, he did a video talking about his Goofbum Mount Rushmore. You know, Mount Rushmore, his book or epic or story that represent what he likes about a franchise and what a fan story are and whatnot. And he tagged people and asked people to make their own video about their Goofbum Mount Rushmore and tagged some people. I was not one of them, but I still wanted to do it anyway, uh, because if I wanted to practice speaking a bit more, and I wanted to show it off. I could have done it like a blog post or something, or a Twitter friend, but I kind of wanted to do a video, you yeah. know, and I'll go, well, the last time I did from speaking when I was on the Up All Night podcast to talk about strained pee, hopefully I'm getting that right, again, to me, I found fine, but I'm looking back, I'm like, you. Well, I must speak clearly, because I don't have someone. When I'm talking with someone, I know when to repeat my golf if I can't communicate well. Back what happens if I did the up on that good, I would be sure. I will gang. But anyway, I want to do a group of my short video. I have picked up four story. So we can be TV, Epicom TV show, we can be the movie, they could be short story, they could be whatever, they could be the musical, which is real. I have a t shirt of it, even, but I don't know what it is. Um, you know, if it's under the Goofball banner, the Golf Fair game, go ahead and pick out four that to me aren't my specific top four, but they are the ones that represent what I like. The things that work in the franchise, which can be very hit or miss. But often can have a lot of great story within, and I figured why not show off the one that to me represent the best. Go, and I have honorable mention at the end. Um, that so, and I just get started in no particular order. But I'm gonna start with my personal favorite, and that would be Welcome to Camp Nightmare, as well as the episode on the back. They have Welcome to Camp Nightmare on the one day only DVD. Sorry, mirrored. I like the cowboy came in back by and I'm ringing because I don't feel like getting high end equipment for something I'm not gonna be interested in doing anyway. And welcome to Cat Nightmare. I won't be on the car for my well. I think it's my think of my favorite book story. Not necessarily the best. There are things you can pick out of. But the story revolves around Billy who go to Cat who go to Camp Night Moon and basically a lot of weird things start happening, like bad things happen to the camp moon. And the Calhoun do not care. They will they they'll go anywhere from oh you baby just you know walk it off to if they they'll vanish and they'll be like who that person gonna you're crazy I don't know who had it and Billy have to figure out the mystery <laughs> and what work about it is flawed the story had there little filler moment and very good twist there are two twist ending. Very Arl clacking Arl Dine twist ending. One of which is just ripped off and twilight going anyway, which he does a lot. And both of them have plot holes if you really want to analyze them. You know, and they're definitely little moments that are weird. But from clacking thinking of clacking group up story and again that a lot of them have trope for here, but are executed much better. Or really well, at least. The best thing that makes me love it is Billy, who is probably the most competent protagonist the ever had. Death can't kick more. I mean, 
he, when things go wrong, he, like, tried to goof it out, and then very much a bad actor. Like, he, especially in the climax, where he stands up to Uncle Al. He really showed off how much he, he wanted to get things done, and, and the TV episode in particular really showed him stepping up. Uh, the actor, Kai Eric Eric, can make his name. Hope I remember that right. He's really good. He's one of the best characters we've ever had. He was also in Are You Afraid of the Dark. Are you afraid of a, Are you afraid of a dark? Right, the tale of dead men float and you're great in that too. And that got a great epic, but fucking good bump. Maybe if we do come out from a video for that, I can talk about it there. But for now, <laughs> and I think the epic does show him like he he had an emotional guy. One of the big things of that he showed empathy to Robin, and so he's not just a, like a killing machine on him. He's not boring like. He not like a boring story where everything happens and he can fix everything. He remembers a real kid who is not perfect and he's just very competent. And the story is structured to make him like that. Uh, but at the same time, that don't work very right. well. It's a story of a lot of offense, a lot of tension, a lot of building, and they had some interesting theme to it with the twist ending. Cause it feels like a commentary on society in a way. In a way, maybe I'm not intending it to be, but especially when you get to the twist and the, the, why this is going on, it really gets into some interesting idea. And the second twist is very goofy, but it's so dumb that it's great. It's so goofy. And the TV episode it catches up on it very well, and it got go intent, wrong, all over direction, very good, and it's very memorable, very quotable, very fun. Like it got. Like a lot of wine in the moment you will remember. <laughs> yeah. You know, all we had to were good. And I feel like, in general, I could do a video just on this book. And then this might. But for now, this is my favorite because it has like, a lot of the, the things I like and dislike in like one package. Because it has things that could be kind of annoying but work. And I could twist that dumb and kind of undone everything, but it's more smartly executed or more smartly executed, or the least is more interesting, and a good foreshadowing, so you can tell all if I thought of a twist, and kind of how will I get to the point, go, so, just a really, very fun, very, very fun and charming and nostalgic, especially if you're talking about, I didn't, but I've been considering similar to this, so, and it, it's my favorite because of the fog it could have had, but avoided, or does, but still charming, go. So, it's my favorite, but and TV episode represents it very well, and it's better actually by moving out a few minor things and capturing what makes it work. But my favorite, not for being the best, but for being the most entertaining and the most interesting. And camp stories and book are often very good, but this is my favorite. So uh, the second one I have is the one I probably should have started with is the obvious one, the Haunted Mac in the episode, but I don't have it. I don't have the VHS. <laughs> what can I say? I don't know. being made, I'm sorry. But what can I say? Haunted Mac is one story everyone knows. It is the story from Goofbump people know and love, even if they don't like it in general. You can go for a TV episode. If you don't like the book of a show, you know a story and you love it, or at respect it. I f I'll go over it quickly. I have Carly Beth Caldwell, who is teased and bullied for being legally scared. Now on Halloween, she gets a Mac that you know, allows her to be scary, allows her to get her to a bully, Chuck and Steve, but it's a haunted Mac, not really, that gets stuck to her face and turns her into a monster, but the very kind of that she wants to get revenge on. It has a great Halloween mood. Very good pro, actually. Pro, you know, like the writing was very good. It's great atmosphere. This book and the cup coat are Halloween. Well, every Halloween I do read the Kim Fu book and I watch the episode because of so sorry about annoying. I've got one, you know the clip doing claim. Yeah. Yeah, come on here. Um but they get strong Halloween atmosphere, the costume for candy, that feel, even the theme, the idea that you wear costumes because you want to be someone else. And so the danger of it being that, Carly Beth is a very likable protagonist, she's very sweet, 
and then she she like going that she lay low, but she's not too much of a looper to where you like my strategy followers she go in. She's a good person and even fine for life. It's just that she got the one problem, and I really like thematically the the most thematic story. It has a moral and it will be a very clever way to teach it. it I'm gonna know, particularly in the episode, but in a good way. Yeah, have the moral about be yourself. Definitely. I mean, obviously, but I'll go a few other aspects to it, like realizing that people around you do love you, you should recognize that, even if maybe not everyone does. Like, her mom creates the clatter of her head, which is weird looking, but she can, I mean, because I love you, and that's very important. Go, so a parent becoming important and loving a child automatically makes the feel weird for both <laughs> the parents are usually awful but here she is very good and I think the horror is very strong too what the Mac Dunk tour is very creepy and in cat in the two show of a performance by Catherine Long a performance by Catherine Long it's excellent and she she she, she doesn't get emotional in a very strong way. She also already favorite art. The Tale of a Walking Shadow. Not a great episode, but she's great in it. So, and I do feel like the episode has that atmosphere of the acting to really make the story come to life really well. And make it just go emotional. I feel like we you see where it goes, you know, the shopkeeper providing it to the backstory and that traumatic type of well. The book I got a few minor short going the episode thickness and the episode in well, the first episode and it was the like, hour long special on the box and it was very good. Um, both are excellent. I just prefer the upgrade a little bit more. Um yeah. And it was talked about a lot, arguing a lot, just because it's one of the few group stories that teach touch people in a way that story usually don't. They just fun. But it's good to have one that really put so much effort into it. and I think the court has been the bad one to start with the one that means the most to me because I do find it to be more fly and more interesting. Yeah. You know, well, it definitely it is not just for group but for kid core like in general it just go it just go good. It's a really beautiful story when you give it down to it. Um Cover fantastic as well. I think the one I can't name it actually. All of you come, because not every cover is great, but a lot of them are. There's a co and are fantastic, especially on the, you know, the VM code directed by Timothy Bond. He did a fantastic job. So I think that up code just propelled it to something different than just another good group bump story. Go, so there you go. Where's my second? Two more. Um. So my next is gonna be a book. Okay, so this take a guy if you were scary and bring us to Goofbump Gary to Falcon Jekyll and Heidi. Again, five out of the flip. I guess we wanted at least one that out guy was scary. So a bunch of people love you scary. The other stuff I think more fit too, and this is a big example for me. Um this one I had a review of a blog yet, by the way, so. Um this guy Heidi who who her parents die in a car crash and she has to live with her uncle Jekyll in Vermont. And when she gets there, she's a rumor her uncle her uncle got scientist, the cook of course you. And she you know, that weird thing going on over there. And every once in a while a beast comes through the village and that could get everything up. And they could bet Jekyll might be behind it and he might even be the beast. But for now he's a pretty fine guy and have a daughter that is Bukunkin to Heidi, Mariana, who kind of standoffish, you can, you know, cooperative, she kind of, you know, kind of a bad, weird situation, I think, actually, this book is very emotional, I didn't, I didn't know our entire group book was capable of it, yet you have it here, but this kind of tragedy, the parents are dead, go, and we got an uncle who cares, go, wow, all oh. found, great parenting. It's just kind of a fan to it immediately, and like a very dramatic, melancholy type story. You have your traditional monster movie type element. It definitely has a feeling of a Frankenstein or Jekyll and Hyde type story, obviously. Um, and it, the, yeah, they it, it were very charming in that way, but you also have the tragedy that follows Heidi as she 
she writes poetry and then emotional and I feel like it won't like a little cheesy at times but I feel like in over dramatic I think that in a good way a little drama in a very classic universal monster sort of way I know there's a couple drama that can be more dramatic but charming and it's, just, it's very engaging it's just the type of story you usually get they have tropes that you usually see you get mad science you get monster you get that feel but done in a more emotional way that feels like a good melding of what typically of a trope art I grew up with and like this different type of storytelling being more emotional it gets to a pretty good climax and ending that it may be a bit too cool but I love the going into it is well foreshadowed and it's effective in the tragedy you know it can be slow at times a little generic but um but like very good writing and Heidi is a great protagonist and I like the reveal who the beast is and I thought it had a lot of tragedy and it's just the book that really takes the storytelling to new height and like Han and Mac it's a different type of story and I definitely feel like Gary to Falcon is known for being either experimental or more um dar just darker and this experimental and dark I mean there's one scene that involves a hamster that is wild and Gary to Falcon can really do read different type of story in a way that's very effective and very well written and I feel like this is a good example of that and I just wanted to show how even though Cabbage Gary you have your gem that do be different things. It can pay homage to the past and the thing Hawkeye definitely grew up with. With its own unique spin on it. I mean, not unique, it's not f fresh, but it's quite well executed. So that's why, you know, that's why that need to be there. And our last one is one I do not have physically. It's a, from a book I don't have, but I read an archive that I want to go. I will use something else to represent it though. So, we have Tales to Give You Goofmum, uh, a series of short story collection, and this is a compilation of the free. What I want to present for my last is a short story from book number six, which is more and more and more Tales to Give You Goofmum. It is Christmas themed, I do not own it, but the story is a holly jolly holiday, and I wanted to include it here because I wanted to show. But I'm kind of a book for other weird things that are worth looking at in this case. Like a Holly John Holiday. And this short story has a girl named Beth, not Carly Beth, who is a bit more of a clinical type. And on Christmas, her older, older sister Jody comes again with a Christmas special called Holly John Holiday, which is very, it's about Googie Snowflake. Googie Snowflake. Who go around bread and cheer. And they're very scaccarous and very plotless. And it, but she like it while Beth hates it. But it's kind of think, make her gag, she's a cake. And then she gets a special VHS tape of it from an old store. And then whoever watches the tape, the version, turns into Goofy Snowflake. So they get, they get red hair, they become a lot more hyper, not hyper, but cheerful. And like, they think like deary a lot. And like make sugar cooking and like all that good stuff and like about people watching it transforming and Beth trying to fight it. It's like the ring, but instead of dying in the day you turn into a ginger. <laughs> Not a stone joke at all. A original joke, do I think? In this story, the gloss recording very mediocre. But a lot that are great and the point of that. It is a very not nah, it definitely have a more sarcastic kind of more of humor. That is very charming. Because it's the, the big fun of the overly gacker and cheery Chris special you often see by making it like very plotless and being like about someone who is cheery and that again and someone who like at one point mentioned as like magically cheering up a grumpy guy and being annoying and it had a lot of fun with Beth her voice the way she talked that like sardonic way of speaking and how at some point she comes under a spell and it transforms and you start getting her you know it's very clever in the way that's written you get a character of voice because sometimes even the best one the character will be written in the same way you usually need 
but the one, the Warped Waking are very clever. Maybe not clever, but definitely different. And it flowed well, and it got scary idea of like being turned into, especially coming, especially if you're not like a Cooper up, it, it kind of makes fun of like fork by activity. The idea of forking people to be on pocket if you're not. Can't jelly jam try to come to two, but this one will firmly with it. Yeah, I think the idea of Gary in a comedic way, because this is kind of horror comedy done well because it's very funny, very like, clever, but of course, scary idea. But scary idea when you actually think about it, you just may prevent it in a goofy way. It flows very well, it doesn't drag, doesn't feel too short, doesn't feel too long, and it's just a very smart. It's a clever story. There are a few other short stories I will bring up in the honorable mention, but I think Vic is the one that represents what a short story from a group can do and be unique and do something that maybe for a book it will drag. Might not, but joke with Warren Finn, but for like 13, 15 pages it works really well. And if you know if like, to me, it has become iconic and she appears in the mobile game. Group up Horror Town, where she, they have a lot of fun with her. Go, go hide on holiday at my fourth thing to show the short story and how they operate and what they do. Go back to my mom, Rushmore, some great stuff. But first, come honorable mention. I got two. And I almost considered putting in here, but I couldn't fit them in. If I could do five, I could have fit one in the back, I had to keep it the four. Uh, the first one I want to mention, I think an original candy book. The Haunted School, number 59. Vic is definitely like in my top three, along with Kent Nightmare and Haunted Mac. And this story, I won't go too much into detail, but it is a great story. It has involved a, a gray world, like another dimension of everything gray. And it seems like it could be boring, but it's not a very tragic story. And it definitely sad. And had come, uh, one scene that messed up, it's just how weird it gets. Like, you know, it starts off like pretty standard, but then it gets tragedy, then it gets interesting, and then you get the book of lore, and the character in the back way that tragic. And to go to different places, but it doesn't go too far. Like, still can hide it, you can argue it took a step too far, again, but here, it's a very good bump feeling, because it's kind of goofy when you actually think about it, but execution is very effective. Um, and uh, Horror Town covers this book, and went into more detail on the villain, we don't really this one is great, and I feel like I wish I could have put it in there back with to represent other areas if I try and go. But there, there is a haunted pool. No episode, but of one, but we have one down for. But the other one, it's not one I do not own, but I wanted to represent it, and it is from Give Your Golf Group Bump, which is a choose your own adventure game book theory where you choose character conventional, potentially. Like you, you, it can get a perkin, you go to a page and it'll tell you, do you do this? Or do you do that? And then you go on the adventure. Um, a lot of them can be very creative, very fun. Some of them bad, but most of them are charming. And I wanted to show off at least one of them. Um, the one I have right here is the, the Kirk of a Creeping Coffin, but it's not one I'm beginning. Because the one I want to show off is Beware of a Beetly Baby Skitter. I don't own it, I'm using this. That one is just a lot of fun, it's a very fun guy to get up. Like, you have a baby skitter coming in, and it spirals from there. And you have to play games against someone in there. And like, survive the crazy thing of a baby skitter. And it's a very good game book because it has a lot of fun with the game mechanic. Involving a wheel and games you play. And um, I feel like it, the mechanics are really good. You can make different choices and see how we play out. And I'll go to play games. Um, and some of these can be drive. But some of them are very creative and find different ways for you to make choices that impact the work where it goes. As well as different type of... Give it one game, Gokut. Well, come up with a general thing. And you get a well written story because you do have different routes on what the baby killer character and what she does, and all of them feel more pathetic, and they think that is what I like about the book. I have different route with different situations that often very creative, but also are definitely scary in some way, and it's a good gameplay, it's a well made game, like a book, which I think this one is well, but not much of the one I'm mentioning. 
And I think it replicates everything Give you stuff Goofmup can do. I think each of the very different Goofmup represent what I like about that Goofmup and what it can do. So that is why I want to add a Fatmup Rush one, my primary one. Camp Nightmare, a book in the episode, High and Ack, a book in the episode, Jekyll and Heidi, and a Holly Dollar Holiday. I wish I owned Holly Dollar Holiday, but. But all well. But fair if I goof up that much more. It count longer than I wanted, but for a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you yeah. know. And there's other things I got to feature, I mean. Uh, they're a goat worm. <laughs> now, if we're talking about the parking lot dumpster in my worst one, that'll be there. <laughs> But this can be actual on this one. <laughs> so there you go, but before going up to the that I think we're again. What work on the French flag when it does work? And I think I communicated that pretty well. <laughs> I think, uh, that was a lot of talking. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the if you can understand me well enough. I'm gonna uh, upload it anyway, regardless of how it turned out, just because I tried. I think it's a good tip, it's a good tip to be going forward when I do a video, but uh, I'm waking <laughs> I don't usually talk this much in a row at once. <laughs> the game when I did the up on night thing, they talked in between. God, I wasn't talking constantly. So, I have to be careful that time I do a video. <laughs> like the company <laughs> getting my mouth dry today, I don't know why. But there you go, but go pump my much more. Share your in a video and a comment. I'm not gonna tag anyone. I think everyone in the community already done one anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would like to do maybe a review for my goop pump stuff, but uh, or just I'll do a edited video hopefully soon. I don't know. I think we'll do it for fun because I feel like one chip in because a lot of people are doing it. And I think back about it. Go to stay tuned for more video. Not for more review on my blog. I put up 99 Fitry for trilogy that review. Go, you gotta follow that and I'm gonna be doing bad when I do my stuff for that bait video when I feel like it's fun. Go back back with much more, share your share the love, share the opinion on what I pit. If you love the book, you hate them. See how our opinions line up and uh back about it. Uh goodbye.